thousands of people will pay and give anything to be here with you, sitting in this chair, chair you have. Go to uh, Sick Kids Hospital, or Mount Sinai, or Toronto Western, or even here. People will give anything just to know what you have. People with oxygen. So be thankful for every day added to your life. Okay. Be in reverential okay. fear and awe of the God who gave you your life. Amen? Amen. The two prayers, and I would encourage you in the days ahead to read through the two, two prayers of Hannah. Read through it. But when you read through the prayers, don't go through it so fast. Look at the words that it says. My heart exalts in the Lord. My strength is exalted in the Lord. My mouth delights my enemies because I rejoice in your salvation. What salvation is he talking about? What, what salvation is he talking about? His, his enemy, the second, second wife, is laughing at him all the time. And then God takes him out of that scornful state, scorn state, and blesses her with a child. Salvation of God in the Old Testament could be deliverance from anything. It could be safety, it could be answered prayer. That's why he is in awe of God. When was the last time you actually closed your eyes and just wept with joy in awe of God? Listen to Chris Tomlin's indescribable, that song. Listen to, listen to the lyrics of the song. Who made all these, uh, these things in heaven? Who told, who opened the skies and let the, the snow fall from, from the skies? You're indescribable, oh God. Even the old hymns, Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder. Our problem is, we watch the Raptors game, they win, oh that's awesome. That's not awesome. There's only one awesome, God. We watch something and say, oh amazing, that's not amazing, there's only one amazing grace. We become too flippant and overly familiar with our words. And we use the words that are only for God into everyday things. That is why we lose that sense of awe of God. That's why we lose that sense of reverential fear of Him. Hannah was a woman of reverential fear and awe of God. Hannah was a woman of her word. I, like, I love this because... You know, you always hear people say, you're a man of your, a man, a man of your own word. You say something, you do it. This is a woman of her word. When he said to God, I will give you my child, she gave her son to God. No buts, no ifs, no conditions. You gave this child to me, I promise you this, I'm bringing him to you. When you say something, the people believe that you will feel it. Can people rely on your word? And you say, yeah, we're going to practice for present worship at 7.30. And, oh, it's going to come at 7.30. You know, when he says that, he says that. When Brother Lem says he's going, to, uh, he's going to lead the present worship, he's going to be there. <laughs> so, can, can, can people actually depend on your word? Ask Hannah Shum as a woman of her word. It's very, very important, you know, I work as a financial services advisor. And being a woman, uh, being a person, your word is very important. It's called credit worthiness. If you promise to borrow and you pay it on time, you're credit worthy. If you promise to borrow and you don't pay it on time, you're R2. <laughs> you missed one payment. You promise to borrow, you, you fail to pay two times, you're R3. You promise to borrow and you're going to pay, you're R9. It's bankruptcy. <laughs> so it also reflects that if you're a woman, if you're a person of your word. The third thing that you see about Hannah, the only five things I'm going to show you about Hannah, then we'll get into how does, uh, how does this uh, apply to my life? How does it become real in my life? Hannah was a woman of wisdom and knowledge. Two things. Proverbs says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. One wise, fear the Lord. When Hannah prayed those prayers, I mean, you can see how Hannah actually expressed wisdom and, and knowledge of God. There's no narrative. Walang sinabi doon na si Hannah ay nag-aral sa Bible school, sa seminar. Walang sinabi doon na si Hannah ay nag-college sa university. 
Ang sabi din siya, asawa ni Otana. And this is not isa kanya, right? And yet, look at, her, look at her prayer. My heart exalts in the Lord. My strength is exalted in the Lord. My mouth delights me because I rejoice in your salvation. And it talks about the holiness of God. There's no rock like our God. This is way, way before David would, would uh, uh, write that, uh, Psalm 27, The Lord is my rock and my fortress of whom shall I fear. He was, Hannah was really, uh, telling about God being the rock of, his, of her soul. There's none besides you. There's no rock like our God. Where did Hannah get this? How did Hannah develop a theology of God? Who taught her? You may wonder. He, he, he talks about, um, uh, one of the things I, I like about this because she was using the word servant three times in her first prayer. And now she would say in the second prayer, talk no more so very proudly. Let that arrogance come from your mouth for the Lord is a God of knowledge and by him actions are weak. What it tells me is an attitude of humility. You know, in a movie called Avatar, one of the lines that, that I like is that it says that, you know, you cannot come to you cannot come with your vessels full. You cannot come to God with many vessels are full. You come to God with empty vessels. You empty yourself to God and let God fill you. Because if you are so full of yourself and not of God, that's gonna be very, very bad. That's gonna be terrible. There's no one like God. There's no one besides God. So God likes the brokenness of his people. When Hannah came to God in brokenness, God, I think, appreciated that. Because she knew what her place was. And she knew who could feel it. Note that in chapter 1, for example, her husband, who loved her twice, said to her, Hannah, why do you weep? Why do you not eat? And why is your heart sad? Verse 8 of chapter 1. Am I not more to you than ten sons? Wow, but mahal na asawa. Hindi ba ba ako sapat sa iyo? Bakit kailangan ko pa ng anak? Ang dito naman ako nagmamahal sa iyo. That's just the way uh, literally Hannah would say. Pero ano ang ginawa, ano ang ginawa ni Hannah? Ang sabi niya dito, she, Hannah went to God. Hannah knew only God can feel her deepest need. And far too often, Christians would fall into that. Christians try to put into the vacuum, into the God-sized vacuum of our hearts that only God can fill. We try to fill it with achievement, with performance, with money, with reputation, with friends, with relationships, with sexual escapades and all that stuff, with booze and drugs. Sex, drugs are not all, and they don't fit in the God-sized vacuum because it's a God-sized vacuum only God can fill. But notice that when, he went, when she went to God, she came home happy, she was able to eat and drink and pray. And then things happened. A woman of wisdom and knowledge realizes that she's an empty desk. That there's nothing that can fill her deep inside, her deepest longing, her deepest yearning. Nothing can, can comfort her saddest moment, the dullest part of her life, except the presence of God. Amen. And sometimes you don't even have to talk to God about it. Romans 8 tells us, Paul says that the Spirit himself groans with us in words we cannot understand. Right? Romans chapter 8. There are times we are not able to express the groanings of our heart. But in God's wisdom given to us, the Spirit groans with us. Remember a young boy in the Philippines was called to pray. And he said, A, B, C, D, E. And the one was teaching him to pray. What are you doing, boy? Why are you saying A, B, C, D? I you to pray. Yes, I'm praying. I'm, I'm taking every letter and asking God to put repetitions in those letters. Sometimes we are just like that young boy. We don't find the words to say. Panginoon, anong gagawin ko sa anak ko? Pinalagi ko siya, Panginoon, na may takot sa iyo, pinalagi ko sa Sunday school, na may memory verse. Bakit kayo ang mga kabarkada niya ang giniwala sa Diyos? Panginoon, yung anak ko, sinabihan mo na doon at pinaling paliyog with unbelievers. Kasi ikaw ay redeem sila, hindi. There's no privacy between light and darkness. Bakit ang kanilang yung boyfriend o girlfriend ay Muslim o Hindu o Buddhist? There are things, deep things and anguish in our hearts that only God can feel. When we make a big, big mistake, we try to find the solution elsewhere. 
Hannah did not, because it was, she was a woman of wisdom and knowledge. Fourthly, or lastly, Hannah was a woman of infinite devotion and loyal dedication to God. I'm always big on devotion to God. When I was a, a youth leader back 12 years ago, I was a very strict disciplinarian of a youth leader. I, I had a van, I would pick up kids and bring them. Tuesdays was discipleship group. Friday, Friday night was uh, evangelism, basketball evangelism. Saturday was uh, Sunday school teaching, uh, uh, training in worship, and then Sunday was supervising everybody. Four days a week, and three days a week I had to uh, my, my job. There was no time for my family. My kids used to say, oh, God is, uh, God is so busy with other kids. It's no time for us. I had to stop from that. But what I failed, that was 12 years ago, when I came back from seminary, I looked for my young people and gathered them together. I was very happy they all came. But I was sad and the news. Seven of them came out as gay and lesbians. Two of them went to uh, live with their boyfriends. And like, saan na punta yung matinuro namin sa kanila? Saan na punta yung matinuro namin Biblia sa kanila? Be holy because I am holy. Flee from fornication, from sexual impurity. Saan na punta yun? And I realized one thing. I failed to teach them the best thing in life. The best thing in life was for them to realize that God loves them. And because God loves them, they will not sin against this guy. Remember see Joseph? Joseph was made the captain of Potiphar's household in Genesis, right? And he was handsome, good looking, and intelligent, and the Potiphar's wife said, Ika, sumitin ka sa akin, Potiphar's wife. And no, Christ, ano sabi Joseph? God has been so good to me, how can I risk him in sin against my God? I realized that the best way, the best deterrent against sin was to always experience the love and faithfulness of God in my life. When was the last time you were so touched by God's faithfulness to you? That you could have helped and say, how can I sin against this God? He's so good to me. Lamentations 3, 22, 23. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. His compassions fail it not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. This is Jeremiah. You know what, what was the context of that? He was looking at Jerusalem. People were being led in captivity to go to Babylon. So it was really a time of despair, a time of, of sadness, a time of uh, uh, devastation in Jerusalem. And yet, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. When was the last time you actually said, You are a faithful God in grace your faithfulness? When was the last time you were so touched by the graciousness of God to you that you could tell but God? How can I thank you? I was watching this. I was told by a friend of mine, I was watching this documentary of four people who were disabled, handicapped, and quad quadriplegic. Handicapped and quadriplegic. Quadriplegic means to say they can't do anything because they are uh, people and they are at lake. And you know, when they were asked, if you were to meet God in heaven, what will you ask him? One of them said he was crying, he was weeping, but it was How can you love me in this state of mind? Paano mo ko iniibig na wala naman ako ang ibigay sa iyo? Can you imagine that? People will complain. Why did you make me like this? How can I help you with this?